Uh, the so kidneys, you're saying, mm-hmm. not the same organ in the morning as it is at night. This is what yep. circadian biologists have been screwing from the rooftops, and now that's coming home to roost in these papers that you're reading, or maybe it's a meta-analysis, I don't know. Sipping water at night, or just mm-hmm. slower intake, gulping in the morning, mm-hmm. and I I threw your, your train of thought mm-hmm. off the rails. All good. <laughs> I mean, basically, you want to look at the first half of your day very differently than the second half of your day. Morning part of your day, you want sunlight or bright artificial light. Why? It increases cortisol 50% above baseline. You want cortisol high early in the day and you want it low, low, low later in the day. Not because it disrupts sleep, but because it's late shifted cortisol is associated with depression, screws up your immune system to have it late shifted. Beautiful work from Bob Sapolsky and David Spiegel at Stanford School of Medicine have shown that. Hydration, caffeine, sunlight, movement, bright light if you can't get sunlight early in the day. You really want what are called the catecholamines, which are dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and you want cortisol, which is a glucocorticoid, elevated in the early part of the day. That's what's going to give you energy, focus, alertness, all that great stuff throughout the day. And then you want to taper that stuff off as the day goes on. Now, recent data have shown that if you want to improve your rapid eye movement sleep, why would you want to do that? Well, rapid eye movement sleep is when you get the emotional, the unpacking of emotions from previous day memories. I mean, how do you get more rapid eye movement sleep? High intensity interval training early part of the day or cycling appears to greatly improve different stages of sleep as well compared to running. Although running will do it as well. I don't know. I think it has to do with the central pattern generator thing. High intensity interval training, I mean, you're pedaling on the bike or you're sprinting. So it's repetitive, but it's not repetitive for long enough that you're engaging certain brain circuits. So- and it's going to deplete different neurotransmitter systems. It's going to engage the endorphin system rather than the dopamine. Bicycling, mm-hmm. when I can be upright, you know, I think your Dutch bicycle, you know, moving yeah. through a city, seeing things, optic flow, seeing which we know shuts down the amygdala to some extent, it suppresses activity. The amygdala, it's beautiful. You see things, you see people. How anyone in the world could want to be hunched over in a partial C position and pedaling as, you, as one is on a road bike, I have, it's just... I have zero minus one interest in doing that. It sounds horrible. And then I heard it gives you all these like prostate issues and it can give men erectile dysfunction. I'm like, you know, cause from the pain, they now put grooves in the seats because, you know, I I just think like, why would anyone be a cyclist? This is terrible. And you're having a pool cue shoved into like your perineum for hours at a time. Isn't good.